Hello everyone, welcome back. I blame iVault for my return to this. This time I'm doing Hagane, or however the fuck it's pronounced. Because iVault's a dick and, well, I can't refuse a challenge no matter how bad it is. Wait till we see when they get me doing Chikan the Forever Man. But this is Hagane, it's a... I'd call it a... I'm not sure if it's actually a Strider ripoff or a Shinobi ripoff, but either way it's pretty fun. Uh, cybernetic Ninjas. There is actually a plot to this game. There's also Cybernetic Owls, as you can see. I don't really care about the plot, so I've skipped over it. This is the first mini-boss yet. Yeah. Insofar as you can call this a mini-boss, it's more a collection of targets than anything else. Now, you do actually have four weapons in this game. They give them all to you from the start. I'm lazy and abusing the fuck out of save states, so I'm just sticking with the um, regular sword at the moment. You can see the Owls. At least I think they're owls making a return. Swordsmen leaping out of nowhere, which, you know, all swordsmen do. And somebody who looks, you know, the monk character looks like a refugee out of Samurai Showdown. And yet he's paired up with a bunch of guys with guns. More cybernetic ninjas, and a guy who I swear just threw a swastika at me. So you can see what sort of game this is already off the bat. This is stage 1-1. One, one. They're broken up into... You know, so there's five stages, each is broken up into four or five sub-stages, including boss fights. Now we have what actually qualifies as you know, a boss fight on this level. Again, it's more a collection of victims than anything else. I haven't even bothered using the special at this point, it's not worth it. Somehow regenerates as well, because I swear I took those turrets out earlier. Because so I kind of feel sorry for these ninja mooks, they're just leaping straight to their death at the hands of my sword. And they're not even getting a chance to really do anything. Yeah, those blue flames are health pickups. I'm going to jump to stage one too. You'll see a lot of choppiness between stages because I've had to re-record some of this several times. These aren't even from the same game files originally. Now we're down in the sewers with what appear to be mutant snapping turtles or terrapins, whatever the hell their proper name is. I'm sure... I don't even know what the fuck that is on the ceiling. And bats and the, those amorphous blob things on the ground which are apparently take human form and drop shurikens I'm sure someone can make sense of this actually I'm kind of fond of the uh, snapping turtles now and yeah you'll see me switching to the shuriken so I don't have to fight that thing in close and it's, it's a floating weapons platform that looks like somebody tried to copy a Japanese castle and fucked if I know why they'd do something like that but apparently they did. I still have no bloody idea what those roof things are. I, yeah, you have infinite ammo for your sword, obviously, because you don't throw the damn thing. And your uh, rope, which you'll see later. Limited ammo for the shurikens and the explosives, which again I'll show you another time. This is actually a really inefficient way to do the boss. I just didn't feel like slashing him to death, because that's what I've done all th through the first two stages. So I'm just going to throw shurikens at him till he dies and you know ends up looking like a hedgehog in the process going back to the sword just to finish the job and yes i'm taking out that bat because i fucking hate bats i've played too many castlevania games i can't stand them and yes those do look those worms do look like the shy Hulud. they look like they belong in dune they also regenerate if you uh, walk over them and come back i didn't do that this time around and I can't tell if that's meant to be desert with or rock with a whole lot of miasma over it. Either way, it can't be healthy to breathe. Now you'll see just how how easy that jump is. You just have to jump and hold down the jump button near the wall. This does not have anywhere near the acrobatic um, antics of Shinobi or Strider, especially not Strider. Which is good because the jumping mechanics in this game... I'll politely say they blow goats, because that's a lot nicer than what I was going to say originally. I mean, they're not bad, but I would hate to have to actually treat this game as a platformer rather than a killer game that actually has platforming elements. More of the Samurai Showdown ripoffs. I'm going to have to go and check what the proper name for that is, because anyway, that's a sad bit of AI right there. That particular enemy only has a ranged flamethrower attack, but they won't use it till you get within a certain distance. Thus, you can just sort of shuriken them off as you feel like it. Which, of course, I'm abusing the hell out of because I'm lazy and cheap. 
Now, these things look like something out of Metroid. I know you've seen them earlier in the level. It's the first time I've just commented on them. Again, see what I mean? AI is dumb enough to stand there and take three shurikens to the gut without reacting. Not that I'm complaining, because if they were actually intelligent, my job would be a lot more difficult. Job, he says, is if he actually gets paid for this. Again, you'll see what I mean. It'll just stand there and attempt to blow flames when you're out of range and probably get the shit kicked out of it. Now, this is actually an auto-scroller section. It's a horrible pain in the ass. It would be a lot less so had I remembered originally that I actually have a game manual. Granted, it's the PDF, but you know what I mean. So I would have actually known how to make the long jump you'll see in about 20 seconds. You don't actually have to kill any of the enemies here. It's easier not to, except for when they're right in your way like that. Because that would have shot me down and killed me had I not done so. And yeah, the forward tumble. If I'd remembered that right off the bat, I wouldn't have had to make more than one shot at this goddamn level. Instead of the about three I think I ended up doing. Including, you know, a half dozen reloads just on that one. Who were the first boss? Mushin Mikuro, and he's going to be my bitch for the day. I'm guessing he's some sort of Buddhist monk, because he just used the Afuda, the prayer scrolls, to summon up... I don't know what the hell they are. Giant armoured samurai demons. It's as good an explanation as any. Doesn't explain why he's wreathed in flames, though. Or how he's not burning from it. Or why the flames he's throwing at me appear to be a different colour and a different type than everything else. Dodging their hands because, you know, you don't really want to get groped by a demon monster. As any woman from Japan will tell you, it's just not a good way to end the day. That's actually the first level I'll be back in stage two whenever the fuck I get around to it.